Welcome to a, another edition of Comic Book Cretin, sponsored by Unicom. So today we are looking at the, uh, well we're going to look at another Lego and move away from comics for a, a little while. Um, we're going to look at the 1967 Ford Mustang. I bought this a few weeks ago from the Lego store in Shanghai. Uh, it cost me, I think, Remembi 1,190, I, I, something along the lines of that. Um, it has 1,471 pieces. It took me probably about, I don't know, maybe 10 hours to put together. I wasn't particularly in any rush. Um, just slowing down and just chilling out to music and taking my time. Just enjoying the process, really. Um, the good thing about this model is that you have your basic Ford Mustang and then you can, you know, customize it if you, you know, on your shelf, change the look of it slightly. Um, yeah, it's been good fun. Um, when I was building it, I filmed it in a time lapse. So we're going to go over to look at that now. And then we'll come back and we'll look at uh, some of the features of the car. So there's some pretty cool things about this uh, Ford Mustang. Once you've completed it, you know, the doors open. You can see in the driver's seat, uh, in the passenger seat in the back. I think you can also, I'm not going to do it now, but you can take off the uh, roof so that it's, um, what's the word, you know, the top comes off. Um, sorry, I don't really know terminology about cars. I've never really been interested in, in cars per se. So... Uh, I'm just talking bollocks, really. Um, but if you take a look under here, I mean, this comes up, the hood comes up, and you can see the uh, you can see the engine, which is pretty cool. The the petrol cap. Uh, it's really nice with the Ford Mustang logo on the front. This was pretty cool to put together, actually. And you know, looking under the uh, the hood, it does look pretty cool. Oh, a sticker is coming a little bit loose there. One thing I have problems with when I'm putting these stickers on is sometimes they don't go on straight, so I have to peel them off again. Something I need to get a little bit better at. Um, so, one thing you can do is you can take the front off, you can take the part of the hood off, and you can make the Ford Mustang into the souped up version. Um, I'm not gonna do it now. I, I personally don't like the souped up version. 
I'm much more um, a fan of this kind of just like traditional Ford Mustang version, the one that Steve McQueen drove around uh, the streets of San Francisco in what was what is probably one of the greatest car chases in cinematic history. Um, but you, I mean, you can soup it up, and if you look, you can't really see it on the video, I guess. Um, if you twist the knob at the back, the suspension raises. Okay, and this adds to the kind of like souped up, like racing version of the uh, of the Ford Mustang. And um, you can change the license license plates or the registration plates. Um, so you can give it a, a bit of a different look if you want to. Um, you know, from time to time when it's displayed on your on your shelf. Um, yeah, it's great. The hood opens, and inside there's a, a gas cylinder. You know, all part of the. I put that in there because I didn't want to lose it, but that's part of the souped up, uh, you know, model as well. Um, yeah, so I'm going to keep this version. Uh, there's something actually wrong with the. Um, I don't know. I don't know if th this is normal, but there's something an issue with the tire, with the front kind of like t steering. Um, so this is just an opportunity for me to go back and reassemble it. I think maybe I made a mistake when I was uh, assembling it in the first place. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll look at some of the completed photos of the completed model on my shelf. So there we have it folks, the 1967 Ford Mustang. Yes, it's been a, a fun little build, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I uh, enjoyed the filming process as well, um, using the time lapse. Um, I wouldn't use this as a toy, I watched a video um, review of this just before I bought it and it, the guy was saying, oh you know, this is more like you know, a kid could use this, use this as a toy and play around with it. Actually, I don't agree with that. I, you know, the little bits easily fall off. It's much better as a display model uh, in your case. Um, so, yeah, when I bought this, the uh, flu virus, the corona virus, was just kicking off in uh, Wuhan. And uh, in the last few weeks, obviously, it's become a big problem in China. And, you know, obviously... A worldwide concern as well so in Shanghai at the moment you know schools are closed a lot of things are closed so uh, I wouldn't say we're locked down but we're encouraged not really to, to leave the apartment and go out and do what we normally do in day-to-day -day life you know drinking and entertaining and, and all that business so to cope with the boredom and it truly is boring at the moment I uh, bought the Lego ex expert Lego London bus. Um, yeah, I bought this because I thought it would go well uh, to have my li a little Lemmy model stood in front of it. It represents, for me, the first time I saw Mosehead in London at Brixton Academy. And actually, the, the sticker on here is Brixton. Yeah, so that's cool. Um, but uh, also, I wasn't content on just getting one. I thought, well, this might take a long time, you know, before we go back to work. So uh, keep it healthy, buy another one. And probably this will be the last Lego I buy for a while because I'm actually running out of space. Although I have got my uh, eyes on the, the Batman Tumblr. If it comes to a decent price, I'll definitely buy that and have that sat right next to my Batmobile. So um, that's it, folks. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe or drop some comments um, and I'll see you next time. All the best. Bye-bye.